Hey, fellas, hope you're doing well. It's so good to be able to connect with you again. Um, our heart is to be able to be face to face, and hopefully, you're praying. I hope by now you've heard uh, Pastor Manny's request for the church to be praying about uh, May 31st. And so, it's our heart, man, that uh, that we be able to, to to see you face to face and, and connect with you. Uh, but for now, this is what we have, and we believe that God wants to use His Word. No matter where we're at, whether we're, we're connected to each other face to face or, or, or via this forum uh, to bless us through his word. And so hopefully you're, you're following along with us through the uh, book of Nehemiah. It's been a blessing to uh, go through it with different guys, get their perspective. And it's always a blessing to hang out with my brother Abel. Abel, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Uh, you know, just uh, trying to redeem the time, you know, and, and like, like I want to just uh, re echo what Henry said. Uh, we miss you guys, you know, uh, I love you guys, you know, and so we don't know what's going to happen, but uh, we're hoping that uh, God will open a door again for us to be together and meet and uh, fellowship. And of course, it, when we meet, we're meeting because of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, a lot of people want to meet. They want to get together with their families, but there's nothing greater than us meeting for the reason, which is Christ. So again, you know, we want to just... Uh, uh, pray for you guys also encourage you that uh, you know God is still on the throne and uh, he, you know he's going to get us through this all right well with that said let's go ahead and let's pray father in heaven God we thank you so much Lord for this opportunity again Lord uh, be able to record this study and, and just to think of the brothers that are that are watching it Lord and what they must be going through lord uh, the different challenges that we all face in life god I, I pray god that you meet them right where they need to be met that you remind them lord like we talked about last week that you have done and you're doing a great work in them lord and uh, we just pray that you would use uh, this letter that uh, nehemiah wrote that you inspired god um, to bless us uh, to encourage us to challenge us um, and to remind us, Lord, of your great love. So I just pray you be with Abel and I now as we, as we uh, go through Nehemiah 7, and you be with uh, our brothers and their families, Lord. And, and of course, we pray that uh, we would be meeting face-to-face uh, -face, uh, sooner than later. We lift up this date to you, uh, asking, Lord, for your sovereignty, God, to, uh, to lead us in every way. So we praise you, and we thank you, God, and we ask this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so hopefully you can pull out your Bibles right now, guys, and uh, we're going to continue through the book of Nehemiah. Uh, last week, Ray and I uh, went through Nehemiah 6, and so this week we're going to cover Nehemiah 7. And so get your Bibles. Maybe you can follow along. Uh, it says in Nehemiah chapter 7, Then it was when the wall was built and I hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, that I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother Hanani and Hanani, the leader of the citadel, for he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. So, Abel, just, just right there, the first two verses, man, uh, what, what did you take away as you studied that, as you read that? So, so we see that the, the wall is complete, you know, and so the, there's, there's a significance. Why, why did they build the wall? Why did they rebuild the temple? And so it's to worship God, you know, they got the singers, the gatekeepers, the Levites, you know, so the gatekeepers that tells us that now there's a job to do, that there's people who have to uh, be watching all the time, you know, that there's time that, that the enemy's still there, and so they can't let their guard down. And then, you know, we have the, the singers ready to lead the people in worship and the Levites, which are the priests, who are going to lead the people in the house of God. It's interesting to me because this is the, this guy, Hanani, he's the one who went to, to Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Nehemiah, and he told him, hey, he asked about the condition of the city, yeah, the condition of the people. So this guy, he's a guy who is prepared to to do this job so he's he's electing a guy who's qualified for the job and then this other guy Hananiah the leader of the citadel he's the one who's been living there but it tells us something about him it tells him that he's a faithful man who feared God more than many so he's picking guys who are qualified who have the right attitude you know the Bible tells us that 
you know, you, ha you have to be a good steward, be faithful, you know, and so to, to, play, to know that, you know, that's important because you don't just pick anybody. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, you know, that moreover it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So you could have all these gifts, but if you're not faithful, then you're going to probably not finish, you know. So later on in, in the same chapter, verse 17, Paul tells him how he sent his servant Timothy, his son in the faith, who was a faithful servant, to go to Corinth and speak to them about the things that he had already established there. So I like that, you know. So God is looking not for qualified men necessarily. He's looking for men who are faithful to the work and to the word of God. And so that's what I saw in those two verses. Hey Amen. Same thing with me, bro. I, I you know, I, the, the, the phrase that, that came to my mind and to my heart is that the, tax, the task was completed, you know. Uh, the wall, the doors, remember uh, in Nehemiah 6, he says, hey, the, the, the wall was built, but the doors hadn't yet been hung yet. Well, the wall, the doors were hung. The task was, was completed, but not the entirety of the work. Um, and we need to understand that God is going to call us to do different works. He's going to call us to different callings. And, and perhaps by his grace, uh, you know, we're able to complete that work or he's able to complete that work through us. But we should never stop because God's not going to be done. God, God doesn't stop. God's work doesn't stop um, on this side of time. One day when we go to heaven, then we rest with him. But on this side of time, if God has called you to do something, we don't you know, rest on our laurels. We don't say, well, I have did something already for God. No, it's not your laurels that you're resting on. God is the, work, the one that did the work through you. And then at the same time, we don't stop asking, what's next, God? What do we do now? What, what's next? You know? And so I thought about Philippians 2.13, you know, uh, um, which is it's a, it's, a, it's an awesome verse to consider because it, it says, for, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And Ephesians 2.10 is, is a verse that we all should know that, that we were created for a, pers a, a purpose, huh? that we were created for good work. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has that work that he set out for us already prepared. And so what we need to do is we need to say, Lord, what is next? Father, what is next? And, and, and that's kind of what came to mind. Various things came to mind. Another thing is, like you mentioned, you can't do it alone. Right. You know, the, 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 you, we can't all be Nehemiahs, right? right? We can't all be Pastor Manny's, but in all reality, Pastor Manny will be the first one to say that, that he, can't, he can't do this alone. Nehemiah couldn't do this alone. God will send faithful servants along your side to help you to complete the, the, the task. Nehemiah couldn't lead unless there was somebody following, right? And, and, and we've been reminded in this church a lot that if you want someone to follow you need to be a good follower yourself and nehemiah was a good follower he's given us that example we know enough of nehemiah through the first seven chapters that he was a man of prayer that he cared for the people he sobbed you mentioned right. when he asked his brother what's the condition back home he cried he cared he had right. god's heart and so uh he, he's he's a qualified leader and and therefore god then sends them qualified um fellow workers right, right. and and paul he, he mentioned that on numerous occasions in, right. in his letter, my fellow workers. Right. And, you know, it's so cool that you said that, you know, a, a fellow worker doesn't necessarily have to be the brightest, man. I, I, I could attest, you know, uh, you know the, 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 the most brilliant scholar. The, the Bible says that God uses the weak right. to lead the strong, right? Um, but, but the qualifications, and I think it touches on that here in, in verse 7, are, are evident. You know, um, that they, they need to what? They need, number one, to be faithful, and they need to fear God. And I just, when I read that, it automatically acts, uh, you know, chapter 6 came to mind when seven are chosen. Right. And they're chosen for what? some would consider menial tasks, which is basically to be table setters, which are to be waiters. But yet 
the qualifications didn't change. They said you need to pick men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit. And so the qualifications to be men like these, these guys right here um, is simply to be available and to be faithful and to fear the Lord, to be full of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's what it says in Acts chapter uh, 6, verse 3. Uh, 1 Timothy 3, 7 talks about the fact that we're to have a good testimony. And then 2 Timothy 2, 26 tells us that what's at stake so that people can be let out of the hold that the enemy has on this right. world. We see Amen. that. We see that. We're now, our eyes are now open, fellas. Hopefully, your eyes are now open to the blindness that you once had as you see it in other people. You recognize that. That's what you had in the past. You were blind. Some of the same things they say, some of the same things they do, you, we used to do them by the grace right. of God, right? He's, he's working in us. We're still, we're still defected. We're still, you know, we still sin. We're still in this wretched body, right? But he's working. He's doing a work. And so what's at stake? It's, it's, it's those people that, that are still within the grip of the enemy. That, that's why we need to have a good testimony. That's why we need to be faithful we need to be dependable and we need to be full of the holy spirit uh, uh warren worsby says that the greatest uh, uh, ability is availability and i would add dependability you know and so we got to make sure that we're, we're guys you know if you're out there and you're thinking well who am i how could i serve guy the greatest qualification brother that you could have is to be available and to be faithful and to fear god and to love god god will do the rest God will do the rest. And so that's what came to mind. Here in, in verse 3, we read, And I said to them, Do not let the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot, and while they stand guard, let them shut um, and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, one at his watch station and another in front of his own house. What did you take away from that there, Abel? So here we have, uh, you know, uh, the workmanship of, of guarding, you know, the watchman. You know, it, it just reminded me of Ezekiel 33, verse 2. It says, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from their territory that make him their watchman. So here in, in the book of Ezekiel, it's talking about a watchman on the wall. It, 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 this is a personal uh, message to me because these are verses that the Lord gave me shortly after I came to the Lord. So there's a responsibility as men to be watchmen on the wall over your family, over the church, over the body here that when we meet, you know, we're supposed to be vigilant, watching over the flock, and then making sure, what are we watching for? That no bad doctrine comes in and that people who are coming to do evil do not come in so here you know they the jeremiah knew i'm sorry nehemiah i keep saying jeremiah he knew that the enemy was still there there was still a threat just because the building was up doesn't mean that they were not going to try to come in and do something so it talks about a watch station and 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 the house your own house so the watching is for your life it's not just here it's in your house the enemy wants to come into your house too so you got to be a watchman there too to see what comes in and what's trying to come in you know the enemy uh comes in sometimes we allow him to come in so you have to you're called in case you don't know you are called to be the watchman on the wall of your family of your house of the body here you know and it's an important job and and so here we, we know that they are to watch, you know. And so we, we could say in America that perhaps the people were not watching because the enemy has come in in a lot of places and has changed the word of God, is not going by the word of God. So I want to tell you that here, you know, in this place where I serve, I've been here a while, that we have watchmen. But God wants you also to be part of that. Yeah, by the grace of God, um, you know, this, this church continues to be a church that uh, teaches the, the word of God. And, and, and uh, we're going to be okay as long as we continue to do that. Um, 
Yeah, but the, the same thing with me. You know, I, I thought about the wall. What starts off here in Nehemiah that the wall was built, the, the, the doors were, were hung. And then my mind automatically went to the Wall of China, which is the, the, the longest structure any human or humans have ever, have ever built, have ever made, 13 miles long. Thousands died in, in, in its construction, you know. But did you know that it was penetrated numerous times? Not by people climbing it, but each time by, by, by the guards being bribed. And so what good is the wall? What good is the wall if, if people go in through the front gate, if the door is open? And I think that's what Nehemiah was saying. Warren Worsby said that, you know, in the first half of Nehemiah, the people existed for the wall, but now the walls exist for the people. And so we've, we've you've been walking with the Lord for a little while. And, you know, now, you know, for whatever reason, you know, you're, you're, devotion to him in the sense of being able to come to church being able to be in fellowship with one another being able to sit and thank god we still have the technology and i pray that you're you're listening in on the sunday studies when pastor manny teaches or thursdays that you're being fed that way that you're that you're going to your word and you're asking the lord lord speak to me but there's 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 been a gap in the wall so to speak and and the enemy could come in right now he could come in and he can capitalize that. Don't allow him. Don't allow him because what would be the point of the wall that has been built around your life to then have the devil come in through the front door? Like, be careful with that, you know? Be careful with that. Don't ever think that, that, that you're going to have security in the wall. You've got to be uh, manning the wall, like Abel mentioned, the, 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 the watchman on the wall watching seeking the point of the wall so that they can see when the enemy was coming and that you could have these defenses and so that's that that stood out to me second thing is 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 the people you know we, we were concentrating on the first half of nehemiah on the wall building the wall building the wall but it was for a purpose it was for the people and now in nehemiah the people are gonna they, they're gonna take center stage it's about the people. And that's what Nehemiah was doing here, right? He says, man, don't open the gates of Jerusalem. Be, be open until the sun is hot. And while they stand guard, I was talking to my nephew yesterday, and he tells me that he works right across the street from Nickelode Nickelodeon Studios in Burbank. And he says, that place is like a fortress, man. They got walls around the whole thing. And when people go in, a wall goes up or a gate goes up. And as soon as they go in, whew, it goes down now. I pray that they're doing things that are okay there. I would think that the reason why they had they have this protection is because it's valuable what they're trying to protect. And a lot of children probably work there, you know, are there, and so they're trying to protect the kids. It's the same thing here, and even more. You know, we're protecting our hearts as 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 Christian men. You know, uh, uh, that that thought, you know, uh, comes in that hey, look at her, or, or talk to her, or do this, or do that, or watch this, or smoke this, or drink this can come at any time, especially because of our past, especially because that, that old man, man, he wants to, he wants to crop his, his head up all the time. We need to make sure that we're patrolling that wall, that that wall is impenetrable, that we don't allow just anybody in, that we, we hold those thoughts captive to the obedience, right, of Christ. And so, Nehemiah's doing that. He's being a leader. Don't let the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot while they stand guard. Let them shut and bar the doors. Appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I love that. Among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You know, you don't, you don't go and, 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 and choose people from outside in the world to come and serve. You put people that have been proven, that, that, that have shown faithfulness, that have shown a fear of God among the inhabitants of Jerusalem to work that wall, to watch that wall, to watch that station, and another one over here. Um, and so it is so important, huh, Abel, that we just continue, man, that, that the work is not done, that the enemy doesn't stop. We talked about the fact that, that the enemy, he just strategizes, man. He, you blocked this side. I, mean, I think Pastor Manny told the dream that he had one time where the enemy was, oh, there was a thief or someone that was trying to come in, right. and he would go and he shut one window, and then he would see the enemy run to the other one, and he would run to the other window. Man, what a perfect analogy, right. huh? Right, right. Uh, of how the enemy, he's, he does not. He's not going to say, okay, you shut, you shut this front gate. You don't give up. 
I, I'm gonna come into the back. Okay, so it says in in, um, in verse four. Now the city was large and spacious, but the people in it were few, and the houses were not rebuilt. Then my God put it into my heart, I love that, to gather the nobles, the rulers, and the people that they might be registered by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return and found it written. Now, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the genealogy, but uh, anything stand out just there in verse 4? you able so in verse four you know he he's he's doing his research again you know and so he he's counting the cost he's checking things out just like he did in chapter two when he went out at night to research the wall and to see you know what was going on what was needed you know so now he's looking at the city the inside the city and he's seeing you know what the houses are not rebuilt there's not a lot of people here you know, and so the whole point was to rebuild the walls, the temple, and to repopulate the city. So the, the houses were not rebuilt. So then he's going to go into the next phase of repopulating the, the city. And so he, I love it where he says that God put it in my heart. You know, so a lot of times, you know, God puts things in our heart. But here we're going to see that he's a man of action. A lot of times God puts things in our hearts and we don't do anything, you know. We stay, we, we hear it, but we don't do anything. So just to, to, to encourage us that, you know, when God calls you and, and God's about to move in your life, you know, when God puts something there, that means God is about to move and he wants to use you. And so we, we shouldn't uh, turn a deaf ear to, to God's word to us. You know, I, I believe personally that God is calling the men in this body and the whole church, the whole worldwide church, to action in these days, you know. Uh, you know, to do something for, the wor for, for God's, uh, you know, workmanship, for his glory. You know, he didn't save us. We, we, you know, Henry talked about that, that these works were created before the foundations of the world. He did un, didn't save us just to just do nothing, you know. He called us. He saved us unto these good works. So I just wonder, you know, are we searching our hearts? Are we looking, uh, asking God, like Henry said, what's the next step? What do, what do you want me to do, Lord? You know, uh, it should be on the forefront of our mind as to what does God want from me? What is it, what is it my life that I'm going to give for him? You know, after all, you know, God, Jesus gave his whole life for us, you know, as a ransom for our sins so we could have life. So in this having life, you know, then, then what do we, what do we want to do for God? So, you know, I, I just want to encourage you that, that there is a workmanship. If you're not in it, you know, ask God how to get in it. And so, and then he goes on to talk about, you know, registering the, by genealogy. So, you know, we're going to talk about that, these names that are coming up. But, you know, God is perfect. You wonder why, why does he list all these names and, and he has them in other places in the Bible? Because God wants to show how perfect he is. That he called, there's nothing that, that is in this book that is not true and he wants to show it he shows the genealogy of jesus christ and the other in the gospels because he wants to show how perfect his plan is and that it's going to be fulfilled so the only one that can unfulfill it if you will is you you can choose not to be in god's plan so again i want to encourage you that there is a workmanship and god wants you to be part of his work yeah, I was thinking right now as you were saying that that one day a book will be open and um, they're going to check in that book um, if your name is in it. It's a book of life. And how important it is as we see here this genealogy. You know, it says the city was large and spacious. Why is it saying that? Because what it's basically telling us is that it, there's room now. There's room to grow. There's room for, for work. There's, war there's room for, for purpose there. Um, you know, Warren Worsby, he, he, he looked at, at Nehemiah mentioning this genealogy as these people being like a bridge, a bridge to allow other people to come in, to come other, other people to come in and build and make a, a, a life for themselves and love God and have it be a place where they honor God. 
Um, it's, it's a trip, you know, uh, it, um, able to go to, to Jerusalem, to go to Israel, and, and to be in awe of, of what that place signifies, but have people live there like it's nothing. Go to, you know, the, the place of, of, of what they believe Golgotha to be and see that it's, it's, it's right over this, these, this parking for buses and there's graffiti there. You know, and, and, and to think like, wow, man, this is precious. This is where our Lord, you know, was taken. This is where he was crucified, more than likely. And yet they're treating it like it's just nothing. And so one day when we get to heaven, it's not going to be based on what we did. It's going to be based on what Christ did. But it's going to be based on us putting our trust in what he did. And that is when, what's going to allow us to come in. And so you got to make sure, guys, that you're in that genealogy that counts. And, and, and the simple way to get into the family is just by trusting the Son, by putting your trust in what Christ has done and responding reciprocally to that grace that's been shown to every single one of us. Thank God that God loves us. Thank God that he doesn't count our wrongs against us, that he's a father who picks us up. Sometimes he'll give us a spanking and say, I'm doing this because I love you. I don't want you to do it again. But he doesn't say, get away from me. He doesn't stiff arm us. He puts his arm around us, and he takes us with him. Thank God for that. Remember that, guys, that, 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 that these people, you know, you might... And we touched, we talked about it, honesty, you know. Pastor Chuck said that, you know, you don't really have to go through this genealogy if you don't want to. You know, Pastor Manny made it harder for Abel and I because when he taught it, he read every single name. And, and I was just thinking, like, right now, man, you know, we see numbers. Numbers are being shown to us every single day. And, and, and you can go to a website and, and literally just sit there on the website and see the numbers changing. See the numbers changing. And, and, and pretty sure, pretty soon, excuse me, you could think of that just as a number, you know. And in all reality, these aren't just numbers. These aren't just names. These were people, and people count. People count. And so with that said, uh, I'm going to try to read <laughs> because I'm convicted now. So please, I hope I don't lose you, man. There's a purpose and a reason for this, right? That's why they're in the Bible. It says, um, these are the people of the province who came back from the captivity of those who had been carried away from them from whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. We returned to Jerusalem and, and to Judah, everyone to his city. What an amazing thing, a reminder that, you know, they, they were carried away, and they were carried away because they got carried away, right? They got carried away from God. God allowed them to get carried away, but his, his faithfulness, his covenant with the people will never be broken. He, he, he will always draw people back to himself. He will always draw people back to his city. It says in verse 7, those who came with him, Zerubbabel, were Jeshua, Nehemiah. This is a different Nehemiah, obviously, right? Azariah, uh, Ramah. Uh, and, and you know what? It, it, you don't even know if I'm pronouncing the names wrong or right. I'm pronouncing them exactly like a Greek scholar or a Hebrew scholar would, just so you know, okay? Uh, uh, Nehemani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Misperet, Bigvai, Nehum, uh, Banna, the number of the men of the people of Israel, the sons of Perosh, 2,172. The sons of uh, Sheptia, 372. Pastor Manny's in another room right now, and I could hear him squirming as I'm pronouncing the names. The sons of Era, 652. The sons of Pahat, Moab. The sons of Jeshua, Joab, 2,818. The sons of Elam, uh, 1,254. That This addition is going to make a difference. There's a purpose for it. The sons of Satu, 845. The sons of Sakai, 760. The sons of Benu, 648. The sons of Bebai, 628. The sons of Asgad, 2,322. The sons of Ado Adonikam, 667. The sons of Bigve, uh, 2,067. The sons of Adin, 655. The sons of Ater, of Hezekiah, um, 98, the sons of Hashum, 328, I need some water, the sons of Bazai, 324, the sons of Harip, 112, the sons of Gibeon, 95, the men of Bethlehem, Netopah, 188, uh, the men of uh, Anathoth, 128, the men of Beth, Azimuth, 42, the men of Kirjat, Jerim, uh, Shevira, and Birot, 743, the men, I'm almost done, the men of Rama and Giba, 621, the men of Mikmas, 121, the men of Bethel and I, 123, the men of 
uh, the other, Nebo 52, the sons of the other, Elam 1254, the sons of Harim 320, the sons of Jericho 345, uh, the sons of Lot, Hadid, and Ono 721, the sons of Zina 3930. Uh, it goes on, man. Um, um, again, you know, these people are a bridge, and that's why they're being mentioned. They're going into the city. They went into the city. They went in to rebuild the temple. They went in to re recapture that which God had given them, and that's why they're being mentioned. They're, they're, they could have stood home. They, they, I'm sure at, at this point were comfortable where they were living. They, they, were, they were comfortable. This, this uh, uh, trek back to uh, Jerusalem wasn't going to be like they were going to be, you know, uh, um, checking them in, you know, at the, at the, at the uh, Sheraton or whatever hotel you can think of. No, they were going to have to rough it. It, was gonna, it wasn't going to be easy for them. It says, the priests of the sons of Jediah, verse 39, of the house of Joshua, 973. The sons of Immer, 1,052. The sons of Pashur, 1,247. The sons of Harim, 1,017. Uh, boy, this list is long. Uh, <laughs> well, the Levites, the sons of Joshua, of Kadmiel, and the sons of Hoda, 74. I already said I was going to do it. I got to do it. The singers, the sons of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, the sons of Atzer, the sons of Talmon, the sons of Akub, the sons of Hatita, the sons of Shobai, 138. The Nethahim, the sons of Zia, the sons of Hasufa, the sons of Taboth. The sons of Kiros, the sons of Sia, the sons of Padon, the sons of Labana, the sons of Hagaba, the sons of Samai, the sons of Hanan, the sons of Gidal, the sons of Gahar, the sons of Rhea, the sons of Rezin, the sons of Nakoda, the sons of Gazam, Uza, Paisa, Basai, Menuim, Nephishim, the sons of Babuk, the sons of Hakab, the sons of Harhur, the sons of Baslith, Mahida, Harsha, Barko, Sisera, Tama, Naziah, Hatipa, uh, the sons of Solomon, the servants, uh, the sons of Sotai, the sons of Sopharet, uh, Parida, Jaala, Darkin, Gidel, Sheptaya, Hatil, Pokert, and Zebim, the sons of Ammon, all the Nehim, and the sons of Solomon's servants were 392. And these were the ones who came up from Tel Mahal, Tel uh, Harsha, Cherub, Adam, and Immer, but they could not identify their father's house nor their lineage. Where they were, uh, where, whether they were of Israel, the sons of Deliah, uh, De the sons of Tobiah, the sons of Nakoda, 642, and, and of the priests of the sons of Habiah, the sons of Koz, the sons of Barz, uh, Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai the Gilidite and uh, was called by their name. Uh, these sought their listings among those who were registered by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore, they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled. And the governor said to them that they, would, they should not eat of the most holy things till the priests could consult with Urim and Thummim. Okay, we're going to stop there because I need a break. But Abel, I mean, you know, not even just the, the genealogy because it, it speaks for itself. You know, these are people. They're, they're just not names. They were people, and that's why they're, they're there. God is so gracious that he does the work. Right. Uh, but then he'll give the people the credit. You know, it, it's right. just how gracious he is. Um, but what do you make just here of this section in verse 61 where the priest, you know, and, and, and um, how they couldn't identify their lineage? What, what, what did you take away from that? Yeah, so, so there, you know, there's these, these, this one group that uh, they, they totally got lost, you know. And so right now in the world, there's Israelites who have lost their identity. You know, but these these were able to find it because they came back to the land. And so, you know, perhaps, you know, you've fallen away, you know, and God is like Henry said, he, he, he's not going to push you away. He wants to wrap his arms around you. So there's always hope. You know, there's people who I hear about it every day, you know, people that used to walk with the Lord and they don't walk with the Lord. And I wonder what's keeping them back. So, you know, I was reading the, the commentary that 2% of the people that went into captivity came back. So what happened to the rest of the people, you know? So, so there's a remnant that God needs and he brought back to the land. And so this genealogy also talks, it, it leads us to know that God 
is a, a keeper of his word, that he's not a man that he should lie. And, and so this is, the captivity was to end after 70 years, and he brought him back into the land. You know, and so that shows us that and, and the perfection of God. That's why these names are in here. But I wanted to read, you know, something out of Malachi because, you know, your names are not in here. Our names are not in here. You know, but, but Henry already talked about this, that our, our names are written in the last book of life. So in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. So that is the Christian, that is us, right? And so we know that, you know, th that's the only book that's important, you know, that your names are written down in the last book of life. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20, it says, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So, you know, this is kind of a, 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 an analogy, an example of that, that these names are written down, you know, because God is an individual God. He's a personal God, and he knows you personally. You know, the, the, even when you stray, he knows you where you're going, where you've gone. So if you, you know, lost your, 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 your identity, like verse 61, where they, for, they, they didn't know, you can come back. I want to encourage you with that. And so you know, this is a time to get closer to God right now in this time of trouble, to get the closest. So, you know, they're, like Henry said earlier, they, these names are written down for God's purpose, you know. And so we could know that God is faithful to his word, and he brought the people back into the land. And even though the city was desolate, there was no inhabitants, not many, God is going to fulfill his word and then make the people have their homes back yeah i think with me you know what i want to just kind of convey is that that you know what gets your name in like abel was saying it's it's not your works it's not anything that you've done you know you i go to church three times a week i read my bible every single day i pray for this long man that's not going to get you in you know the person that's going to get you in is the person of jesus christ trusting in him alone that's it um, all those other things come because because he's working inside of you. He's the one that's drawing you to him through through prayer, through the through his word. We need his word. It's it's the bread that 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 we feed on. Um, but that that is the only thing that gets you in is Christ crucified. Amen. Second thing that I I want to communicate is that you're not going to be able to one day go and knock and say, "Is my name in there?" And if your name's not in there. Have your name added. Like you see these, 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 uh, these movies sometimes where they go, you know, uh, to a restaurant and they say, oh, I'm the, you know, the Acostas, and they look on the list and, I'm sorry, sir, your name's not on there, you know? And you see the guy slip them, you know, like a, a, you know, a bill or something like that. And, All right, go ahead, go in. It's not going to work like that in heaven, man. You know, the Bible says that we have one life to live here and then we're going to have to face judgment we're going to have to face god and his judgment is going to be based on do we know his son or not and and that, that's the, the the heart of what we need to take away from this first that it mattered it mattered who was serving it mattered who god had it mattered we know right in the old testament we read if certain people did or touched something and they weren't supposed to they would die it mattered to god that you're that you're serving him but but mostly i think what we need to take away is how do we get in the list that abel talked about the list that matters the book of life and 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 how we have this opportunity to get in you know the the bible says today is the day of salvation so if you're out there and you think that because you come to church you come to the men's fellowship you come on certain days then all of a sudden you're in i'm sorry to tell you you're not we we, we remind you a lot in this church that going to McDonald's every single day doesn't make you a Big Mac, okay? You need to trust in the Lord. And, 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 and you know, kind of seeing your faces as I'm talking, and I know, I believe that a lot of you are in that, that, that list. Praise God. Serve him out of that, you know, because of the grace that allowed you to be in that list. But if you're not, if you're not sure, guys, man, now, and if there's anybody watching, maybe we might have people, some fellas that come and watch this 
because of the situation that we're in. And you're asking yourself, am I in that list? Do I know him? Well, one, man, it's as simple as asking the Lord into your heart, trusting in him. Okay? Read 1 Corinthians 15. If you don't know what the gospel is, trusting in that. And then second, don't wait because we don't know what this this. This coronavirus thing should teach every single one of us is our life can change on a dime. It can change in a minute. We, we can be here and gone the next day. We should have already known that, but now we should even more. And so make sure that you're there. Make sure you, you've trusted in Christ. Amen? Okay, so we go on. Where do we leave off, Abel? <laughs> oh, the, the name's 60. No, I read those. I think we're at 66. Altogether, the whole assembly was uh, 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 245 men and women singers. Their horses were 736. Their meals, it's so cool that they count the the horses, huh? They they think that God doesn't care about the animals. He made them. The horses were 736. Their mules, 245. Their camels, uh, 435, the donkey 6,720. The Proverbs tells us that we should look after our animals because they help us, right? Uh, I mean, some of the heads of the father's houses gave uh, to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 uh, gold drachmas, 50 basins, and 530 uh, priestly garments. Some of the heads of the father's houses gave uh, uh, to the treasury of the work 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,000 200 silver uh, minas or minas, and that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 uh, silver minas, and uh, 67 priestly garments. So just th- that section there, uh, Abel, uh, you know, verse 70 through 72. What do you? Yeah. Take away so from so that? here we have uh, when I was reading this, the word gave. You know, we have it in there four times, and. Uh, so there's a there's a part of giving, you know, that God gives us and, and we're to give, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, we give God out of our abundance, you know. And so God, uh, one thing the Lord has taught me about giving is that all of it is his. All of it is his before he gave it to me. So if we keep that that idea in our minds that everything is his, then we're just the administrators. We're the stewards. And we already talked about a faithful steward. So then the question comes, you know, these people, they didn't think twice about it. They just gave, you know. So when God calls us to give of ourselves, of our resources, whatever it is, you know, we should be glad that he called us to give, you know, to be part of his workmanship, to be part of of the work, whatever it is, you know. Uh, So, you know, God made it, Jesus made it real clear about the, the widow who gave everything. She gave everything that she had. Others looked at her like she didn't give nothing, but God knew the heart, and he, and he knew that she gave everything. So it, it's a lesson to us, you know, uh, how much are we giving, you know? This is a time of, of trouble, the time of, of everybody trying to hoard things and all that stuff. And I think it should be the time of giving instead, you know, giving of ourselves, giving, see who we could help, you know? And I just want to share with you guys that this is a time in my life where God has impressed upon me uh, there's people who don't know Jesus Christ Henry and I were talking about the the book of life and and I'm troubled I'm troubled by by the people that I know who don't know Jesus Christ and they they maybe their security is in other things themselves their good behavior whatever it may be you know but what I'm what I want to encourage you is to to pray to pray don't take it lightly that others are not saved people you know your family you know to to pray and pray and so God will move in their life and call them so it's about giving you know God gave us life and we should want to others to have life yeah you know um the, the, I don't know if there's a saying, but I'm just going to say this. You know, you're, you, a church always takes a form, you know, of, 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 of your leader. And, of course, God, we should take the form of, of Jesus Christ, you know. Um, and he needs the, the perfect example. But I think our pastor, we've been taught by his pastor, and his pastor was taught by his pastor and so forth. Calvary Chapel has never been about, um, you know, harping on money. 
Never. In fact, I think maybe we've even gone way on the other side where we don't talk about it enough because the Bible does emphasize that, uh, that God will bless, that God will bless. Not like a name it and claim it. You know, you give a thousand and God will give you 10,000. No. And God doesn't always bless back that way. He does sometimes in abundance. I think it was, uh, you know, Mr. Penny from J.C. Penny who said, man, I, I give out with a shovel out the front door and, 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 and I cannot do God. He, he, he brings a bobcat and, and he just kept, keeps giving. Why? Because he was faithful. And so we don't, we don't harp a lot. This is a tough time that we're living in. Maybe some of you guys are furloughed. Maybe some of you guys aren't working right now. Maybe it's, it's tough. We understand. We understand. And more importantly, God understands. And, and God knows intimate. But like Pastor Manny taught a couple weeks ago through the Proverbs, we should work our way there. We should work our way to where we put God first, where we know, like that, that lady, the widow that you talked about, she didn't have anything, but she gave everything. And, and so God will honor that. He'll honor that. And that, I think it was Pastor Raw who said, show me your checkbook, back, back when people carried checkbooks. Um, and, and, and I'll tell you how much you love God. And it's a, that's a tough pill to swallow. It's a tough pill to swallow, but in, in some sense, there's a lot of truth to it. And, and you know, these people here in 70, says some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the work, the governor. These were people of title. These are people that God had blessed. And if God has blessed you, don't you think he expects for you to return, for you to, for you to acknowledge that he's blessed you with what he's given you? Like Abel said, we don't have anything. Nothing's mine. It's all been given to me by God. And so this is a good example of them giving. Can you imagine, Abel, if the whole church gave what um, can be accomplished in this city? You know, uh, um, and I'm talking about just the universal church. Right. You know, there's a lot of cults who um, they, they make it a law right. to give, right? And they believe that as they give, that, that they're gaining favor and access to, to heaven. That's not no. the theology here. That's not what the Bible teaches, okay? But yet you see them, man. They have these beautiful buildings. They have this ability to create these productions that are just, and I just think, man, what if, God's people, for the true right. teaching of God's word, gave what that way. What wouldn't the church be able to accomplish? So as the Lord leads, I just pray that you read this and you ask yourself, you know, where am I? And if you're at a place where it's just, you can't. And God knows that. Yes. God knows that, but always have the heart to want to be there. And so we close with verse 73. So the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, uh, the Nephilim, and now Pastor Manny's in front of me, so I'm really squirming because I know I mispronounced that name. And all Israel dwell in their cities. And so just in closing, Abel, what do you think about uh, Nehemiah 7? And just so, so, you know, we see that, that God's plan is being fulfilled, you know. He brought the people back. He rebuilt the wall, the temple. You know, he used the, the regular people to do it. And uh, he looks for faithful men, you know, and then we see that when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. So it all came to pass. So God has a plan for your life, and he's going to bring it to pass. But he's asking you to be faithful, to be patient, be faithful, and to stay in the ministry that he's given you. So we see God's faithfulness all over this book. And so we see man being unfaithful and some being faithful. So the faithful man is the one God is looking for to use. So let, let that be you. Let that be us. You know, like, like the prophet Isaiah said, send me. Send me, I'll go. He didn't ask where he was going. He just said, send me. You know, and God is, God is looking for these kind of people that without reservation, you know, that God wants to use, especially in these days, you know. You know, people are perishing. And they're perishing without God. And, th and that's shameful, you know, that, that if, if, if I was called to speak to somebody and I didn't do it, you know, I repent and God would give me another opportunity. That God would send messengers, you know, to my family, you know, and, and I don't want them to perish, you know. So I want to be faithful to the calling. You know, we, we've been praying, you know, about uh, the church returning. And, you know, I know this is way, 
way off of, of, of Nehemiah 7, but this list, this emphasis on the people and to think that these were the people that came back with, with Ezra and, and, and Nehemiah didn't come to laughter, but they were the first ones to come back. And, you know, I was just thinking like, Lord, and that kind of going to be like the people that first come back to church, you know, that they're, they're going to be the ones that are going to be the bridge for everyone else to come back. And so I just pray that, that you would be praying um, and asking God for wisdom on how he would lead you you know, back, because as a church, we do need to come back. Whether it's a specific date or another date that God has in mind, we're going to need to come back because he has a work for us. Maybe he might have accomplished some tasks, maybe some tasks. Maybe he's already built that wall that, is yet, that, that he's asked you to build or hung the doors that he asked you to build, but, but he's not done with you yet. You're still here, and if you're still here, God has a work for you, man. And so we do that together as a church, encouraging each other, lifting each other, challenging each other. Uh, um, holding each other accountable and so um, I just for whatever reason as I was reading this I was just thinking about that like man these were the people that came back right. these were the people that came back when it was difficult and right. we're going to be called as a church back mm -hmm. soon mm -hmm. and I pray that you pray mm -hmm. um, you know uh, and ask God for wisdom um, because we need to be together we need to be together. And I love the fact that here it mentions the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers. It just didn't say Nehemiah. It's the whole church, right. you know. And, and uh, you know, it's not one person. It's all of us together, you know. The, one person might be the mouth or the head, or the, but we're the arms, we're the ankles, we're the legs. We can't, we can't function without the whole body. And so I, I pray that you would know that and that when we do come back, we come back singing. Because regardless of our situation, today we spend some time in worship because it was applicable to worship the Lord no matter what season that we're living today. Amen? Amen. All right, why don't you go ahead and close us out in prayer. Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you, Father, for your word, for this ministry, Lord, that you still have open for us, Lord. I just want to lift up all the brothers, Lord, uh, who we, we want to see their faces, Lord. Uh, one day soon father i just want to pray for them lord those who are discouraged those who are, who are just depressed maybe lord god who are afraid lord i pray that by the power of the holy spirit lord god you lift them up father lift them up uh remind them lord that they're not forsaken lord and that we're we are we belong to the king we belong to the king and we could really say and stand you know and and be there where where uh you know Job said, though he slay me, I would trust in him. You know, we serve the God and we pray to the God who is real. And I want to just pray for the brothers, Lord, lifting them up to you for their families, Lord. Provide for them, Lord God. Encourage them, Lord. And thanking you again, Father. We lift up this body here, Father, that you would uh, just work through this body, Lord. Even when we're in our homes, Lord, work through it. Be glorified, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name.